Hey up everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be doing another Forgotten Football Ground as part of my series. I've done, I think, 20 to 30 videos on this subject, go check it out. But today we're going to be going north of the border for the first time and we're going to be checking out Love Street, the former home ground of St Mehran Football Club. Although St Mehran were founded in 1877, they didn't begin playing at Love Street until 1894. Previously to Love Street, they'd played at the Short Roots Estate, Abdingdon Park, Thistle Park and the West March Estate, Green Hill Road. The site of Love Street was initially much smaller than their previous ground at West March, barely wide enough to lay a football pitch with some spare ground behind the goals. It was poorly drained and without grass. However, it would give St Merrin the significant advantage of being nearer to Paisley Town Centre than any of the other football clubs in the town. Furthermore, the site was already well known to the townsfolk as an entertainment venue as it was where travelling circus set up their big top. The original Love Street site housed the rebuilt club pavilion behind the Love Street and goal and a new grandstand squeezed along the full length of the pitch with five rows of seats and a total capacity of 1,000. St Mirren played their first home game at Love Street, a 3-0 defeat to Celtic on the 8th of September 1894. Shortly after the original 10-year lease ran out, the club was almost forced to move away from Love Street much as it had already been from Westmarch, with the club approaching Mr Fullerton who owned the ground with an offer to buy the site. The landowner tried to take advantage of the situation by setting a lofty price together with an ultimatum to either buy or face a hefty increase in rent. The club hastily looked for alternatives and began negotiations with the owners of the Short Roots Estate where St Mirren played in its very first season. However, with the prospect of losing out altogether, Mr Fullerton backed down, reducing his asking price to £3,900 and thus St Mirren purchased the ground and stayed at Love Street. In 1921, the club had plans to expand Love Street to a 60,000 capacity. However, it was around the same time that the Great Depression struck the United Kingdom and the plans were shelved. After 1921, there was not much development at the ground until the late 1950s when the North Bank was covered and floodlights were installed. Love Street became a designated ground under the Safety of Sports Grounds Act in 1977, which prompted the local government to demand alterations. In the summer of 1979, the Love Street end terracing was knocked down and rebuilt 10 yards from the goal. There was more talk of covering the new family enclosure at the Caters Corner and installing a stadium clock. With the Scottish Football Association preferring to redevelop Hampden Park, St Merrin remained at Love Street and seats were installed on the North Bank Terrace in 1991. Four years later, after the owner of a large building company had joined the club's board of directors, the 3,000-seat Caledonia stand was built in a deal that saw some of the club's land sold for development as housing. There were also plans to have a similar stand built at the Love Street end, but the bottom fell out of the construction industry and there was a near closure of St Merrin in 1998. St Mirren won the 1999-2000 Scottish First Division title and were promoted to the Scottish Premier League as First Division champions. In order to meet SPL regulations in their first season in the top flight, the club had to carry out further work on the stadium, installing seating on the Love Street Terrace. After the club's promotion back to the Scottish Premier League in the 2005-2006 season, one of the criteria for admittance was that the pitch had to be equipped with undersoil heating. As the club was already planning to move to a new site, it was faced with installing an expensive heating system that might only be used for one season, a financial burden that they would struggle to meet. The directors considered requests in a period of grace from the SPL, but in the end decided to go ahead with installing the undersoil heating. On the 16th of August 2005, the Scottish Executive and the Renfrew Shire Council granted permission for the club to sell Love Street for supermarket development and allow the club to build a new stadium in Green Hill Road. The sale of the old ground financed the new stadium and cleared the financial debts of the club. In April 2007, it was announced that a deal had been struck with Tesco. Under this deal, Tesco would pay for the construction of the new St Mirren Park, an 8,000-seat stadium. 
Work on the new ground started on the 9th of January 2008. The last match to be played at Love Street was a goalless draw between St Mirren and Motherwell. It took place before a sellout crowd on the 3rd of January 2009. The club officially moved to the new St Mirren Park on Wednesday the 21st of January 2009. The local authority subsequently refused planning permission for a supermarket on the Love Street site. As of February 2012, it is planned to be used for housing. One of the unique things about Love Street was that the ground was on the direct approach path for aircraft to the local airport, which at the time was a mere three miles east in Renfrew. Despite extensive planning, there were still some complaints from pilots that the pylon to the right of the stand was confusing their approach and a blackout order was imposed whilst aviation charts had the new landmark added. It then took a further eight months for the Air Ministry to run tests and finally to pass the system for use. The first match under the flood floodlights was on the 13th of February 1959 against Peebles Rovers in the Scottish Cup. St Mary won the match 10 goals to nil. Looking at some attendance records at Love Street, the record attendance at the ground when it had its original capacity was on the 20th of August 1949 against Celtic. This was in the Scottish League Cup and it was played in front of a crowd of 47,438. When the ground had to be redeveloped later on, the record was set for the new redevelopment, which was 27,166, when St Mirren played against Celtic in the 1979-1980 Scottish Cup fourth round replay. And the record attendance set when the club played in the Scottish Premier League was against Dunfermline Athletic. 10,261 people attended that game. Love Street hosted one full international, and that was the British Home Championship. On the 17th of March 1923, Scotland defeated Wales two goals to nil in front of a crowd of 25,000. All the sports or events that happened at Love Street in its, in its existence were in the 1930s, the club tried to introduce Greyhound Racing. On the 14th of October 1932, uh, it was first opened and only just three weeks after the first race, the Scottish Football Association declared a ban on greyhound racing at football grounds and the club lost money on the venture. When the ban was lifted and St Merrin was approached to resume racing, the club declined it. Love Street also hosted boxing in 1938 and between 1975 to 1976, the Paisley Lions Speedway team raced in the British National Speedway League. The first meeting was held on the 5th of April 1975 in front of a crowd of 6,000. However, despite the meetings being well attended, the club folded after two seasons. Their last meeting was held on the 25th of September 1976 when they defeated the Boston Barracudas. Love Street was also the temporary home ground of Greenock Martin, who played one season there in 1949. So that concludes my video on Love Street tonight, the former home ground of St. Merrin from 1894 to 2009 but it was also known as Fullerton Park when they first played there. I hope you enjoyed this video if you did let me know in the comment section below let me know if you've been to this ground. Just the other day as well I went to the Sunderland against Bristol City match and I filmed a vlog for that so if you haven't already checked that out go and have a look at that. Um, I had a really good time out at Sunderland and it was my first time at the Stadium of Light and I really enjoyed it. So if you have any further suggestions of forgotten grounds I could do, let me know in the comment section below. So this has been History of Football, and I'll catch us all later in the next video. Alright, tally bye for now.